Hello everyone and welcome back again to the second episode of this 2022 November challenge which is a series of videos specifically dedicated to film noir that I do every year and that would be published throughout the month of November. The aim is to talk about as many movies as I can possibly film and edit and on this episode I want to discuss a film that is long overdue and I'm referring to They Live By Night released in 1948 and directed by Nicholas Ray. A Live By Night has been often described as the noir version of Romeo and Juliet because it features a couple of young lovers who, let's face it, don't have quite a bright future ahead of them and they are also on the run, similarly in many instances to Gone Crazy. But really this film should be mostly known also for the fact that it was Nicholas Ray's directorial debut, an impressive directorial debut of a filmmaker who right from this very very first movie established a clear idea of what his stories would be about and how he intended to tell those stories. And certainly from this perspective, They Live By Night can be seen as a prelude to themes, protagonists and imagery leading up to a film like Revel Without a Cause, perhaps one of his most famous movies, particularly in the realm of young lovers clashing with the world around them and their parents and the generations that came before them. Based on Edward Anderson's novel, Thieves Like Us, this film was a request from RKO's head producer, Dory Shari, a name I mentioned in the previous video dedicated to The Prowler and also when I discussed Crossfire. Shari always championed projects with a more progressive and liberal view, also films that would be socially relevant. The title of the original novel upon which the film is based perfectly sums up a major idea from the movie and the book, which is that banks, politicians and other figures of authority are no better in many ways than the robbers. They're thieves, just like us. And so They Live By Night tells the story of Bowie, played in the film by Farley Granger, a young man who's 23 and who is escaping the prison along with two bank robbers, Chikamo and T-Dub. The three end up taking shelter with Chikamo's brother and niece Kichi, played by Kathy O'Donnell, who ends up being detrimental in the life of Farley Granger's character. This is just the premise of the story and as it unfolds, it ends up being a mix of a chase, a road movie, and a love story between two lonely and sensitive young people who have to operate in a world which essentially offers fear, treachery, violence and not much opportunity for them to prosper or find happiness. Set against the backdrop of the Great Depression, this story is perfectly captured through the film noir lens as it dwells on the influence and the repercussions of the environment you live in and the impact of your upbringing. Themes that Nicholas Ray would return to throughout his career but which are treated with such sensitivity and lyricism right from this very first directorial incursion. Visually, the film starts in a very unique way, full of visual motifs. Also throughout the film, there are other examples of the kind of visual and narrative style that would be relevant in Nicholas Ray's career, such as sensitivity towards the characters, their predicaments, and setting the camera to be as close as he possibly could. Nicholas Ray started his career in filmmaking by assisting Elia Kazan for the film A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, and he started collaborating with the producer of today's film, John Hausman, with a televised version of Lucille Fletcher's radio play Sorry Wrong Number in 1946 with Mildred Natwick. This was also adapted for the screen in a brilliant film starring Barbara Stanwyck and Burt Lancaster. Nicholas Ray, who had himself experienced the Depression era, felt a strong connection to the story and to the characters and that is something that I think you can really appreciate in They Live By Night. Coming back to how the movie got to be made in the first place, it was one of those cases in which it could have never happened. One, because the book was deemed too violent 
to pass the production code. The novel was passed to Nicholas Ray who wrote a treatment and he drew again from personal experience here. But then halfway through Nicholas Ray working on the treatment, Hausman, the producer, learned that RKO had been sold to Howard Hughes. Normally under the circumstances, all the projects initiated before that period were shelved or discarded. But when the treatment was finished, the management promised them that the project would carry through under the new production chief. Charles Schnee wrote the screenplay for the film and they finally got green light for it. The cast was formed by the young couple on the run, Kathy O'Donnell and Farley Granger, also Howard the Silva, JC Flippen, and it seems also that Robert Mitchum was discussed to play the part of Chicamo that ended up going to Howard the Silva, but he went on to play in a fantastic film such as Out of the Past, the ultimate film noir classic. Maybe I don't care. Also, the studio didn't seem to want him to play a secondary role at this stage of his career. Farley Granger and Kathy O'Donnell were both actors under contract with Samuel Goldwyn. Nicholas Ray had wanted to cast Farley Granger as he had gained attention with two prior Louis Milestone war movies, but the studio insisted on having Farley Granger making a screen test of a love scene to see if he would be the ideal actor for the part. Nicholas Ray asked Farley Granger if there was an actress he would be most comfortable with and he ended up calling Kathy O'Donnell who was as I said a fellow actress and a friend working at Samuel Goldwyn Studios. Kathy O'Donnell had already given a very sensitive and very emotional portrayal in a film like The Best Years of Our Lives. And as you can imagine, the screen test went so well that Nicholas Ray was able to not only cast Farley Granger, but upon seeing Kathy O'Donnell, he was sold on the idea of having them together for the film. A brilliant, brilliant choice because they show such sensitivity. They are so great together. The pair would repeat again as an on-screen couple for Anthony Mann's Side Street, another wonderful film noir. The cinematography also of They Live By Night is absolutely brilliant. It is by George Discant, who is a cinematographer, a director of photography that I particularly admire. One of my favorites, in fact, alongside John Alton, Nicholas Musuraka, Jack Cardiff, or James Wong Howe. I talked about Discant when I discussed the film Desperate last year and I really fell in love with his photography when I watched that movie. Nicholas Ray would call on Discant again for his next project, A Woman's Secret, another film for Dor Shari as well in which Nicholas Ray met Gloria Graham and they would collaborate again for On Dangerous Ground. And although this film is shot in beautiful black and white, really Nicholas Ray's work for most people is essentially in color and it's the use of bright electric colors almost in movies like Rebel Without a Cause or Johnny Guitar which heavily influenced other filmmakers. J'ai dit une fois qu'un film comme Johnny Guitar a eu plus d'importance dans ma vie que dans celle de Nicolas Rey, c'est-à-dire que c'est un film pour lequel je me suis pris de passion dès que je l'ai vu. Particularly Pedro Almodóvar, as he himself has recognized. So we have here a very unique story, a very unique film noir that features many elements that we've seen in other movies, but with again very humane and very empathic approach. Nicolas Ray would go on to tackle juvenile delinquency in another movie such as Knock on Any Door, with young men with a tragic fate due to societal pressure and lack of proper parental guidance. And he would go on to direct other film noir cult classics such as In a Lonely Place and On Dangerous Ground. And as I said before, with this film, Nicholas Ray, with his very first film feature, got to make a very personal movie with a very personal style. We also have to mention here the editing of They Live By Night by Sherman Todd in this case and his work also informs the rhythm and the visual style of They Live By Night. As I repeatedly said throughout the video, this is a very unique story, an outlaw story infused with road movie and tragic romantic drama and a personal contribution, a fantastic contribution of Nicholas Ray to film noir. This is a movie that I had been wanting to mention and discuss before 
and so here it is they live by night a movie that you should discover if you haven't already thank you so much for having joined me today for your love for classic movies and for film noir in particular and if you like this video give it a thumbs up because it really helps the channel leave a comment down below if you've also watched they live by night and your thoughts on the movie as well and as always take care stay safe and see you soon with another film noir video bye